Welcome to Bounce Around Charleston. I'm Randolph Miller. Coming up on today's show, we will have Representative Wendell Gilliard to talk about some community events happening around the Lowcountry. Herb Frazier from Magnolia Plantations and Gardens, along with Dave Brizacker, musician from the reggae band The Dub Plates, will be here to talk about this year's South Carolina Jerk and Wine Festival. And coming up later in the show, we will have a performance by New Galaxy. Okay, standing here with me, our good friend, <laughs> the Honorable Representative Wendell Gilliard. Welcome back to Bounce Around Charleston. Pleased to be here, Rip. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, now, tell us some things that are going on in our state. Well, definitely, you know, uh, we look forward to the next session. Okay. And we're getting ready to pre-file our bills for the next session. And we want everybody to contact their state representatives as to whatever concerns you got, whether okay. it be taxes, crime, uh, increase for our state workers on their pension and their wages. Mm -hmm. If you have those concerns, now's the time to contact your state elected officials. So when we pre-file the bills, we can keep our constituents in mind because that's who we're here to represent. Okay, yes. okay. Now, let's... let's move away from that, we have a lot of violence in our community these days. What do we yes. think about that? Well, definitely, uh, you know, when we talk about violence, I think gun violence uh, mm -hmm. really sticks out because uh, we're number five on the totem pole. Number uh, five. Yes, and, and that's not a good place to be. Okay. You know, and I always tell people, you got to do three things in your community. First, you got to get committed, you got to get involved, but you pray first. Okay, mm -hmm. But you have to do those three things to, in order to bring change in our communities. Now, when you look at the gun violence uh, in our state, and I did a lot of research. Okay. In the FBI research, we have three problems as, as it pertains to gun violence. Mm -hmm. Far too many times we see the mothers and fathers crying out uh, publicly, and they got one concern on their mind. Where are the guns coming from? Mm -hmm. Well, when you look at the FBI report, it says the number one problem with our guns in our community they're being brought in our community by the licensed gun people, the people mm. who are licensed to buy weapons. So how they, do you keep that out? How do you well, you have to implement laws. Once you identify the problem, you have to have severe laws. If you're a licensed uh, gun buyer and you're putting guns on the black market, mm -hmm. there should be a stiff penalty uh, for you. Okay. okay? Now and you have to understand that. Now, I've heard mm. a lot of conversation from uh, so people in the public We've had quite a few forums. Are yes. the forums helping? You know, I always say that they are. I, I think that they're healthy. Uh, it engages the community. It actually it, it educates uh, both parties, law enforcement, mm -hmm. along with our citizens, and which is much needed. I think we need that. That mm -hmm. should not stop. But let me tell you about the number two problem in our research, and that's the straw purchase when you look at the FBI research. Mm -hmm. You know, if Gilliard has a clean record, and your record is not clean, you would actually pay me to go purchase a weapon out of a pawn shop or a gun shop. Mm. That's the number two problem. Mm -hmm. The number three problem in the FBI research is the fact that when you misplace your weapons around your homes, you know, someone would steal them. Anyone can pick up on it. Okay. That's right. So those are the three problems when it comes to guns in our communities. Do we still have a problem with racial profiling? Oh, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, look, it, it's no question about that. And, you know, nothing is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like there are bad citizens in our community, unfortunately, there's still some bad office in some of our law enforcement, uh, not only in the state of South Carolina, but around the country. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a realist. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the only way you're going to identify uh, these types of people, you have to have a process and a method in place to weed these people out and prevent them from getting in. Okay, you see, so that, that's very important in our society. But just to turn your back to it and say it's, n it's not a problem, no, that's, that would be a lie. Well, okay, and also update us a little bit if you can. There's been a lot of rain going on. Yes. Down here, a lot of rain. And the cross town, mm -hmm. still flooding. Welcome to Chuck Town. Oh, my goodness. And over <laughs> there, there where my church is, mm -hmm. we had some major experiences on the past few Sundays with cars, situations, flooding, and all of that. Where are we with that situation? Do you well, know definitely, that? you know, first we had to get the funding, and, and mm -hmm. we did that. And I think we use your church, mm -hmm. uh, a matter of fact, as one of the meeting places. Mm -hmm. That's when we had Representative Limehouse, who, who, who was a member of, of the Henry DOT. Brown came. Yes, mm -hmm. and they promised us funding, and we got that, and we celebrated that. Mm -hmm. But once we had the money in place, whether it's state funding matched with the federal funding, you know, it's the time era that we're looking at. You know, 
it, this is a massive project. Yes. You know, and, and I, you know, my hat's off to the city government mm -hmm. uh, because Ms. Cabinets and them would go throughout the community letting people see the timeline it's going to take before you see a difference. Mm -hmm. Now, when you pass through the city of Charleston, you see a lot of new landscaping, et cetera, mm -hmm. a lot of work going on uh, from the DOT and in, in, in our local uh, here, you know, people mm -hmm. paving the streets and everything. That's the sign that the project is still, you know, in progress. So it's going to be a two, three years before we come to a completion that you should see a difference as it pertains to the flooding downtown. But the major problem, the major hurdle was okay. the fact that we had to get the funding. Right. And we did that. So, so the funding the, is, is, is in place. The public yes. just need to understand the timeline. Yes. Of the and work I, being done. And the only way you're going to do that, is, uh, we know it's a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. especially when we're in our rainy months, our summer mm -hmm. months. Uh, people will be calling because nobody likes to come up their porch or see water comes up on their property. And the flooding or something yes. else. Yeah. And the only way you're going to do that, you have to keep having the meetings, these forums, as to, to update people on the progress. I think that's very important. And we had a, a couple of them at your church. Yes, you did. Okay. Yes. Let's move from there. Mm -hmm. You just had a community unity day celebrating the work of our police officers, yes. how well did that go? Well, not only celebrating the work of our law enforcement, but also our citizens working yes. with our law okay. enforcement as to take a bite out of crime in our community. Mm -hmm. This was the 15th annual police 15th community annual. unity. 15 okay. years is a long time. Now, is that anywhere yeah. else around the country? Or well, it, it, you know, I never heard of anybody doing it elsewhere. Okay. You know, uh, I started this when I was on city council back in 1999, mm -hmm. and you were part of that. Mm -hmm. And we took it to the mayor, we took it to council, mm -hmm. and they stuck with it for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I believe we've been having positive results from yes, that. Sir. And we should not stop. We should be about building bridges. We're mm -hmm. going to have problems along the way. Once again, it goes back, and I want to digress for a minute when you brought up uh, the fact that, uh, you know, we don't have good people in all our departments. Mm -hmm. So we have to have methods and systems in place to weed them out okay. and to prevent them from coming in. But we have to have dialogue. And for 15 years, that's what the Police Community Unity Day was all about. Okay. okay? Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you this final moment to tell us about the next event that's coming up that people need to know about. Well, we got a, well, we got a couple of them. Uh, first of all, uh, by the grace of God, we're having our third distribution of uh, Project Cool, cool Breeze. Breeze. Come on. That mm -hmm. will be held on the 13th mm -hmm. at Lowe's, uh, right across from here from Glen McConnell. Mm -hmm. And uh, those seniors will be contacted to come out. You know, we've been blessed uh, for doing this for 15 years uh, with, the, with the help of you and many others uh, at this station here. And uh, believe me, every summer now, we were serving the average of three to 400 senior my, citizens. My, my. Now, if you had to time that two per household, you're talking anywhere from 800 people plus. So we're blessed to show our seniors that we care. And believe me, the hot summer months, we got to let them know that we care. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. And check on your seniors, please. Hey, we, we, we always encourage people to do that. Yes. Well, we thank you for being here on Bounce Around Charleston. Thanks for and having me here, Ray. more you have to yeah. talk about, yeah. and we'll bring you yeah. back. Right. And we want everyone to know, listen for the distribution date. And he said it right here on Bounce Around Charleston, look after your senior yes. citizens. Thank you again for being here. Well, thanks for having me. And we'll be right back after this break.